Hi everybody, it's Robbie from Southern California. Come with me on a special nature walk today. Did you hear something down there? What a beautiful day to take a nature walk. Hi everyone, it's Robbie from Southern California. The sun is just starting to come up and the birds are singing. I don't, you, I don't know if you can hear them, but they're so loud. There are bird sounds all around me, everywhere. All different birds singing. I hear all kinds of sparrows. And of course, I hear a spotted toey. And it's just quiet. Normally, we'd have a lot of planes going by, but I haven't seen a single one. I guess there's that, not that many flights going by these days. But the sun's not up. I don't really see anything either. Came out to see if I could see anything unusual. And all is very still. It's cool. No clouds in the sky yet. You can see the moon is up there. Oh, wait a minute, I see something. Oh, I see the hawk. The cooper hawk has a nest and they've got babies in it and the cooper hawk is now sitting on top of the pole. So I'm not sure if they switched because the babies just hatched. We saw them feeding them yesterday. I thought I saw something, but I don't. And it could be. I mean, there are a lot of times there's rabbits down there and they lay so perfectly still. That's the Cooper Hawk. It's probably calling to me. Probably sees me out here. He's standing on the pole. The nest, I can just barely see it through the trees here. Oh, that scared me. Till he flew right by my head. What happens is the mate shows up. Oh, he went down. Must have saw something. Oh, there he is. And they swap places. Oh, okay, we've got two hawks here. Let's see what's going on. He caught something and he's ripping it into very small pieces. See how fast he's eating? I don't want to know what he caught, but he caught something and he's tearing it very small, which means those babies are very, very small right now. So he's going to tear up his catch into really small pieces and then he's going to go feed his babies. 
the bigger the babies, the bigger the piece. They can, it's amazing. Their mouths are big and they can just drop it in. He's got to make sure he rips them really small. That is the other half of the Cooper Hawk pair. So one is sitting on the babies right now. And then he is eating his catch. Oh, he's going to go back and feed the babies. He's cleaning his bacon. You know what? I'm going to walk over, see if I can catch him going back to feed their babies because he's got to go up the tree there. So let's run over and see if we can catch that. You won't be able to see. But the Cooper Hog just went back in, see? And now he's gonna sit. He's moving around. He most likely is feeding them. And when they're that tiny, we won't be able to see them because we're guessing they hatched a couple days ago. And he went back to the nest. Now he can sit with that food in his crop for quite a long time and he could feed them like now he might have gone in there and fed them. Yeah, I say he or she, I'm not sure which one it was. And then while they're sitting there in about another 15, 20 minutes, whenever they're ready, they could drop a little bit more food. And, and he's already put it into very small pieces. We saw that. So he would just bring it back up and then beat them. That's the tail. We can't see them now. That's that's his tail. His, his or hers. But they feed them very quickly at this age because they're only a few days old if that. Later on, they'll be sitting up. They'll be sitting in the nest. And we'll be able to see more, but right now it's all very new, you know, because they're so small. Okay, so he's got the morning meal for them and probably enough in his crop to keep them fed for the next few hours. So that's the tree. We see, this is the tree. This is the big arb pig pepper tree. This has got a wren's nest in here. I believe there's a hummingbird nest in there. I'm not sure if they're done sitting. You've got, um, well, it's a bush tit, actually. The wrens are in the nest box there, and they've got eggs. Oh, here comes some. Oh, it's a raven. I think it's a raven coming. Yep. But there's a lot of nests in this tree. There always is. Goldfinches are in here usually. A lot of different birds' nests in here. But right now, the bush tits are finishing up their babies, and they've got the big nest in here. Big nest teeny little birds with this long nest. It looks like a basket. And it's so hard to find when you walk away. But they've been going in and out and I've got video I took of that and I think you've seen that on another one. Isn't that something? I'm standing right in front of the nest and it is so camouflaged in here. It is so difficult to see. Once you spot it, you, you see it. But when you before you spot it, you can't see it. You're probably all yelling, Hey, there it is, there it is. And it's so odd, I don't see it. So I'll have to go take a look and step back. Oh, you know what? I think it's right here. It's right over here. Yep. See how camouflaged it is? It's right here. And their babies should be leaving any time. Bush tits nest. They build it like a long basket. It, the nest is, it's, like I said, it's hard to see. It's probably six to eight inches long. And then you've got the wren that is in the nest box. They don't build a nest. They find a hole in a tree and they've got eggs in there. I don't want to bother them right now. I've peaked already, so not today, but I have already peaked. And then the hummingbirds, they're so small, their nests. You really have to look for them, but they've got a nest in here, too. You won't have too many hummingbirds in the same 
um, tree because they're territorial. It would be with, that way with most any bird. There would be like, uh, there wouldn't be multiple species in this tree. You wouldn't have like 10 goldfinch nests or 10 bush tits. They would have a certain amount of space they want and they'll protect their area. I see the hummingbirds flying up on top. Now there could be a hummingbird nest way on this. It's such a big tree. They could have one here and then way on the other side. But I've only found hummingbird nests in here one at a time. But it is big enough. I would think they could have one somewhere and one somewhere way on the other side. There's multiple trees around here. So what they probably would do is just go to another tree. Now once they're done and they move on and they're not doing any more nests, then yes, they can come in and oh, I hear a woodpecker. In the distance, he's pecking away, I can hear him. It's amazing, I would think they'd get a headache. <laughs> I have watched them pound their head just pound and pound it. It's like, wow. How do they do that? I'm not sure where he is. He's way down there somewhere. But I can hear him. I have to keep my eyes open for him. Now I've had a sight to see the other day. And it's the third time I spotted him. But this time I got good footage. To my surprise, something I've never seen here before, we have a golden eagle. At first, the, the footage I had wasn't that good. Well, it was, you know, small. Gary thought maybe it was a turkey vulture because we have lots of turkey vultures. And they, they go up, I hear, I hear a cooper hawk. Oh, he went back, okay. Oh, he's gonna go feed the bird babies too. Let's see if we can get back in time. But the turkey vultures hang out. But Gary said maybe it was a turkey vulture. So I looked it up. Nope. Turkey vultures, of course, have no feathers all down their neck. And they fl their flight pattern is different. Let's see if we can get over here. A eagle, and he came down so low, he must have been eight, nine feet wingspan. No, he didn't go back to the nest. I thought he went back to the nest. In fact, maybe one of them left. The wingspan must have been eight, nine feet. It was amazing. So big. Scary because he dived down while I was... Oh, there he goes. sitting right now. I might have given him something. So it might be both of them taking care right now. One might have left. They switch places. But the turkey vulture flies, which is very interesting, with their wings uh, held a little differently. That's why I knew it wasn't a turkey vulture. But the big thing, if you ever see them flying around and you can't spot the head really good, they're um, the tail. Turkey vultures, when they fly, hold their tail together real tight. So it's very straight. Where the golden eagle flies with the tail fanned out like a beautiful big brown fan. If you see white on it, sometimes they have a little bit of white in the feather coloring. That could mean a young bird, but they can carry a little bit of that white feather coloring until they're like almost two years old. Sometimes the first time they have a nest, they still have a little bit of white. Okay, let's look around. I might go grab a cup of coffee and then look around as the sun comes up and see what else is going on. Oh my gosh, I can't 
can't believe it. As soon as I shut the camera, I said I was gonna go get coffee. It's a good thing I didn't. Lucky, lucky. Oh my goodness. Should I really be this happy about this? They've already eaten my avocado tree that was growing. Look at that. Oh my goodness, there's another one there. I wonder if they're coming to the bathtub. Look at that. Beautiful nature walks I've ever done. Oh my gosh, it's a herd of six. Four. The other one. that they're not eating my garden. That they're just walking through. There'll be another one walking through here. So it looks like that's the same six that came down. Oh, they should be having babies soon. Oh, this, we're gonna have to pause for a minute. Oh, well, never mind. I've got a Cooper's hawk above me and the hummingbird keeps buzzing it. Look at that, it's the one with the babies. Oh, see? So the hummingbird must have a nest, and the hummingbird is trying to get the cooper's hawk to go away. We're gonna go back to the deer. the noise. They're up on top of the hill. Wow. Okay, the six have passed through. If I get up, they might move. They might not. They know I'm here. They looked right at me, all of them. Let's see if 
they can look. See, they're up on top of the hill. They're I'm not going to chase them or bother them. I have no reason to. I got a lot more footage than I ever thought I would. Which means I've got to get up early in the morning, just sunrise, if I want to start seeing them come through. Yep, they're leaving. Oh my goodness. Okay, let them see me, because they know I won't be any threat to them at all. Let me see if I can move to a better position. But they're looking, he's looking down at me. Okay, I think he went. They went on their way, I think. Okay, that was, whoops, totally unexpected. He's still looking at the hummingbird up there. He must have a nest. I don't know why, what he's doing. But he, he was the one that chased the Cooper's hawk away. Look at him. He's watching the deer pass through. He's making sure nobody gets near. Well, he's got a hummingbird feeder here, I put here too, but he's also got the aloe veras and he feeds from that. So it could be a male protecting his stash and everybody's a threat to him. He doesn't want the Cooper's hawk here. He doesn't want the deer. He followed the deer. Or it could be a female with a nest who's very protective. Was that a treat or not? That was super. I can't believe I looked over. I was gonna go get coffee. I look over and I see something moving through the brush. That, okay, gotta go contact my neighbor and let her know. She said she stepped out the other day with the dog take her dog for a walk, and she saw two of them sitting in her yard. But this, I thought, was two. It turned out, I believe, there were six again. So it must be a herd of six. I want to see the babies. And this should be around the time they should start having babies. Yep, I'm going to guess they're gone now and went through on the other side of the hill there. Okay. I guess that's it. Now, maybe I'll go have coffee. Watch, I'll shut the camera off. The bobcat will come through. The mountain lion will come through. It doesn't always work that way. Okay, I think that's it. The Cooper's Hawk is still up in the nest. This is like a little piece of wilderness on our property. I am so blessed. Really, it's so beautiful. Okay, I don't see anybody in the nest right now. She could be either lying low and taking care of the babies or off hunting again. Depends on how big they are exactly. And it's not freezing this morning. When I say freezing, you know, freezing to me is 60 degrees. <laughs> um, it probably is about 55 degrees, I'm guessing. So if the babies have, you know, any warmth at all, and especially if there's two of them, they may leave for a little while, but she could be up there. I just don't see her tail up there. Okay, I'm gonna say the deer passed through and that was a super treat which now means I have to get up very early in the morning and just sit. I still haven't gone in. I think I'm gonna go get some coffee and finish afterwards. I did pause if you saw me put the camera down. The reason I paused is I wanted to get a photo that I could send to my neighbor and send to my sister and brother. I also got a video so I could send it. That's why I paused. I've got a video of one. I didn't want to send such a big video. But I thought it was worth grabbing. I was so lucky I had my, cam my uh, phone with me. Normally I don't carry my phone all the time when I've got my camera. The sun is now coming up. See, you see the sun in the trees? Look how quickly they just passed and the sun is... The sun is coming up. So they didn't come down to the bathtub. I'm sure they know it's here. Because they can come down this hill. Let me see. I can. I guess I am zoomed all the way back. They come through. The ravens are coming. 
And they come to the top of the hill and then they like these trees because it gives them good coverage. And this is where I was standing by the truck bed that day when they came down. They actually came down this trail that day. This one, and they ended up all right here. So I know they know there's a bathtub there and if they needed water, they could have gone. But the point is it's damp and Gary has seen him once drinking out of my neighbor's sprinkler. I think they had a broken sprinkler. And they were sitting, one of them was there drinking. So they know there's water here. Is that cool? I mean, I know they're not coming back. They're on their way. It's just, you know, it's so pretty. I'm gonna have to make a habit of coming out here more before the sun comes up. I tend to do that more in the summer when it's warmer. When it's cold, like now my hands are like ice. But it's so peaceful. I hear a hummingbird buzzing in my head. Oh guys, I just filled your feeders. I'm gonna have to go check the feeders and then I'll come back and finish afterwards. They do do that when I come out into the yard. Somebody asked me, do hummingbirds know people? You bet you they do. They know exactly who is filling the feeders. This feeder still has food in it. And it might belong to one hummingbird. But they they really like the feeders up against the house. It might be a safe place for them. It's their favorite place. So even if one feeder up against the house is empty, they will come look for me. One feeder. There's a whole bunch of them. I can hear the Amazons now. There's tons of Amazons all over Southern California. And they stay in very large groups when they're not breeding. And the groups could be 50 to 100. It's amazing how many there are, but you think about it. They can have four babies um, per nest. They could do two nests. So once breeding season comes, the pairs that are old enough to breed, they break off and then they separate. So they don't live in groups. Then what you'll see, which is now, they'll be having babies now. But you can see my shadow out there. See, I'm waving. Hey. Isn't that something? The sun is just coming up. You can see my shadow. I'm sitting here on a bench that my neighbor gave me a while back. But um, they'll break into groups and they'll have their babies. And then what you'll see flying around is not two anymore, but you'll see four, you could see six, depending on how many babies they had. And that's why you'll see these small groups, because it's, it's the parents. And then as breeding season goes completely out, you know, safety in numbers, they build up again and go back into major big groups. And then they'll travel all over and they'll look for food and they'll find trees it has something that they want on it, and they will just devour the trees. I have been under one of these trees before. Uh, I think it was acacias. I can't remember the name. I'll have to look that up. And they were dropping the pods everywhere. They were dropping. The street was covered. They would just break the pods off that they were eating. And there must have been 50 to 100 of them. I could not see how many. I was standing under the trees as it was raining parts of the trees as they broke the pieces off that they were eating, eating the seeds inside and dropping them. Well, the sun is out and this has been a super thrill for me. I'm still watching hummingbirds buzz all over around me, which means I better go check the feeders. I'm going to go in. Now I'm going to get some coffee warm up and I will continue my nature walk as the sun comes up. See you soon. I haven't even made it into the house and that crazy bird as the sun is coming. Look at this. Now you think he's done? He's not done. He's got to kill that bird. Look at that. That bird is invading his territory. So you could say, cover that window. Guess what? I've seen them beating up other windows. So 
I'm back outside to finish up my nature walk, but now it's so late in the afternoon. I ended up working and doing other things. As you know, in my gardens, I set up lots of solar fountains and a lot of them I made. There's a couple, two of them that I purchased, but the rest are solar. And I absolutely love solar fountains and we feed the birds as well. Now for the solar fountains, it brings in song sparrows and insect feeding birds, which is very important to me because bringing them in brings them in not just to drink, which they do and take a bath, but they stay around and they collect all the insects off my, my plants. So this is a big reason why we do not have to spray, use any insecticide or anything, because they go through they clean everything off. I mean, look how beautiful these plants are. And this is what they do. They're little eating machines. They come in here, they clean everything. There's the flowers from the seed head from the collard. They'll come in, the bush tits, the song sparrows, the songbirds, the warblers, they come in and that's what they do. They're not really a lot of them seed eaters. Some of them, of course, are seed eaters like the white crowns, they come in, they're seed eaters. The house finches do eat seed as well as insects and some greens. But they come in and they maintain my garden all year. And that's why I feel having fountains and putting food out to me is important because it's a balance. I have a nature of, you know, balance going on in my garden. And so does Gary. Now he may not be feeding the birds, but they're going in because he's got the well, you know what, let's take a walk and take a look at Gary's garden. Haven't done that for a while. I haven't even been down there for a while. And we'll walk on through here and see what's going on. Let's go out the gate. This is where I was this morning. Oh my goodness. What a fascinating morning. I was walking through here, going to go into the gate when those deer came through there. I wasn't even sure what I was looking at. I only saw one brown thing. And at first, kind of seeing the head, I thought it was maybe a rabbit because I wasn't sure what I was looking at. But that was amazing, amazing. And I, of course, turned the camera right on and I thought there were three. It turned out there were six and I did see six one night. So it, it must be a small herd that's, you know, claim this as their territory and they come through here it was a couple bucks and I'm not sure how many does there were you could see they were already getting their antlers it had the felt on it and they were growing their new antlers for well what will be the fall later and it was just amazing to see see I have seen them come through here while I was working and this was one night I was picking greens look at this I did this today and this is not a garden tour but there it is that is going to be my fix for snails and slugs. And we will talk about that another time. Then I've got all this to do and there's lizards all over. The lizards too! That's another thing that comes in here and, and collects a lot of insects. So everything is working hand in hand for me. You want the birds, you want the hummingbirds even. Hummingbirds, not only do they feed on these flowers, but they collect insects as well. So they're all important to us. But this is where it all ended this morning, kind of. Let's slowly go down the hill. Let's try to do this without tumbling or going down in a bad way. It's very steep. This is quite beautiful. See, they come in, the deer to graze. They'll eat a lot of the greens. I believe they're eating some mustard flower. That was the flowers that are coming up. Look like they were eating that this morning. They absolutely love apple trees. Look at that. Gary's been putting aloe vera everywhere. And then that is wild radish. I had a radish, some radishes growing in my truck bed there. And the seeds fell and that's all wild now. I don't know if it intermixed with the wild radish or different plants because it's not growing radishes. It's just growing great big plants with flowers. But it's just all so beautiful. It's so quiet. Look how quiet it is. This is just gorgeous. I don't have any footage, but we have seen Bobcat here. Haven't seen him for a while, 
but they they do you know come out here and hang out so we have seen them trying to see what's back there okay Gary's got a dishwasher back there and let's keep going See, we're supposed to start picking all these weeds. They'll be coming after us for weed abatement, and he will be pulling them out. They'll pull right out. But the thing is, this is also food for the wildlife. And then Gary sets up all the logs, which we do use in our fireplace in the winter. But in the meantime, as they're here, the rabbits hide in them, and the lizards hide in them. So it works out really good. We kind of provide back to nature. Oh! Guess what? There's Gary's bees. You know the story. I'm not going to get into it. How he put the box out. He actually built that. Let's zoom in. Because he thought maybe an Amazon would come and they would work on the hole and make it larger. They would think that they found the hollow tree. And he thought it would either be an Amazon or bats or something. Well, within days, the bees came. And yes, he climbed the palm tree out front to retrieve the bees and then he carried the box here. Well, his hive has split. Let's see if we can zoom in and see what's going on inside. So Gary had high hopes that they would move into the barbecue he kind of set up. They didn't, they disappeared, but you know what? They're somewhere, they're probably close by and they're probably still coming into my garden to feed. So now we're down the hill, down going towards Gary's garden. This is where he, you know, sifts his wood chips and he's had many piles brought here. Well, brought all over the property. And the rabbits hang out here. And like I said, we have seen bobcat, not for a long time. I think a lot of the bobcat, their numbers have gone down due to the overpopulation of coyotes. And the coyotes can catch, you know, the cubs quite easily. So that's been kind of sad. So the coyotes have been really wiping out everything. They wiped out all the roadrunners. I used to see roadrunners everywhere. We used to have a lot of valley quail too, but see, they can easily find the eggs for the valley quail because they lay on the ground. And then the same thing with the roadrunners. They're, you know, very much a ground bird, even though they do fly. So they have eliminated all of those. I haven't seen a roadrunner out here in years. It's just too many coyotes is what it is. And when the numbers get that high, you, you know, you're going to start to eliminate other animals. And so that's what's happened. They've really been eliminated. So there has been birds and different animals we've lost. I haven't even seen any raccoons in years. We used to have raccoons. I would come home and drive down my driveway and I would see a raccoon playing in the hose outside. Um, but that, that's gone too. Anything that's ground dwelling, They've kind of wiped out a lot of um, skunks as well. A lot of them, we still do have skunks, but they've wiped out a lot of that. So we don't have as much as we used to, but that's why it was just so wonderful to see the deer. I think the deer are very fast, and as long as they can hide their babies, the fawns, then they can protect them, then they'll have, you know, they'll keep their population to a point up. But I don't know how long that will be because the coyotes are now hunting in huge packs. You can see anywhere from like a dozen up in a pack of coyotes when they used to be more solitary animals. But this is um, where Gary does a lot of his sifting on the wood chips. They've been here for quite a long time. And he'll sift and then he'll use it for planting and different things. So this is going down there. And then of course, this is a pepper tree he planted. Kind of give a little bit of privacy and of course we've got this gully. And when it rains, there's a lot of water down there. Look at the loquats. Oh, the loquats are loaded with fruit. That's gonna be wonderful. Look at all the fruit on them. That's gonna be great. I love loquats. So that's gonna be really nice. So there's a, it's kind of like a natural runoff. And so this gets a lot of water. We really didn't plant anything down there that's all been there and then of course oh these are the trees he's kind of sorry he put a lot of them in again these are Brazilian peppers and he thought it would give you know like a windbreak for his garden here's his garden and there's mine mine's up on top there and then his is down here but what it ended up doing instead of just giving a windbreak 
They have a massive root system and they have invaded his garden so he's had to cut the roots. He wishes he would have thought about it more at the time, and this was years ago, that he would have put something else in here. So little by little, he'll either take him out or he'll do something else, we'll see. I mean, his garden's doing great. He just has to cut those surface roots. Those are the feeder roots and he's been doing that. Then he's got berries here, different raspberries, blackberries, different things here. I see there's already berries starting all through here. So that's really cool. Being later in the day now, I don't see any animals. I don't see any rabbits. I hear things. But I don't see anything. I'm going to have to really start going out early in the morning. But he's got all these berries and he's trying to protect the apple trees because the deer do come down and they like apple trees. If there's no apples on it, no worries. They'll eat the tree. So he's really, boy, he just did this. See, I have not seen this. He was working down here yesterday and he is really determined to really protect those trees. I wonder how he gets in. Well, maybe he's going to climb, which wouldn't surprise me. Then, of course, he's got his papayas down here. Look at that. And they're growing really cool, and they're growing in this cluster. See how it got cut off? Let's see if we can see that. And see, it one, you've got four, tr four of these branches on one trunk. That's really cool. So he's got that going on. He's got a lot of stuff going on. I'm going to have to tell you, I can't give you a garden tour in here because I don't know half of the stuff he's got in here. And really, he has to give a garden tour. Well, I have to do, if he, if he doesn't do one soon, I'll ambush him. And I'll walk through and have him tell you, you know, what's going on and do it that way. Because I know he gets really, really busy and I think he likes being questioned better when it comes to answering. He can answer a question better than sometimes wondering what should he talk about. Look at this. This is literally a jungle. I see the, oh my god, artichoke back there. He's got tree collard. He's got red Swiss chard. He's got the red and green Swiss chard. He's got green Swiss chard back there. I don't even know what he's got back there. I'm not even sure what that is. I don't know if it's collared. It's very bok choy looking, but it's so big. Probably is collared. And of course, his rhubarb. Look at this. Oh my goodness. I have yet to pick any of this and try to do something with it. I have never cooked with rhubarb. I don't know anything about it. Okay, this is supposed to be a nature walk, not a garden tour. So let's just kind of walk through and see what's going on. So this is where he's got the ponds. And it is to protect certain plants from insects because snails can't cross it. So then he can grow different things in the center and it's worked out really good. Then he's got plants that like a lot of water so he can sit different pots in there. And it's been so cool, I don't know if you've seen the past videos, where the bluebirds have come in and they were all sitting on top. There was like six of them and I was up on top and I could watch them like two at a time they were dive bombing down and what they were doing was they were coming down an early early morning coming down to drink and probably take a bath and it was a group of six it was really cool yeah I would definitely have to come back and do something in Gary's garden so you can tell me what is going on plus I'll know what to come down here and pick it just seems like the whole day goes by kind of fast, even though time has seemed to slow down a little bit. But this way I'll know what to get. Oh, you can't even see his pond. I almost missed the pond. Look at that. So he's got his pond here and it's all covered. I think it's duckweed, but I'm not sure. He'll have to say what it is. And then, of course, his bananas. Boy, when they start throwing bananas, we get so many bananas at one time, which is really cool because we could just... Well, he picks them, of course, the whole, the whole cluster. And then we freeze a lot of them. And we froze them different ways. I think my favorite way is to pick them, peel them, slice them up in you know, just small pieces, and then freeze them and throw them in a plastic bag. And it works out really good that way. Let me climb over here. He's got nasturtiums down here. But I know this is where the Orioles nest and I'm not sure where they're nesting. He told me he has seen them down here. Oh, there's bananas up there, see? So they're starting. So we should have bananas soon. I don't know where they are. 
but I heard that they are building a nest, and I will have to come down here and ask Gary where they are. But this is where the Orioles nest, and this is where the birds come, and then of course there's lizards. There's a lizard on the wall. There's my nature. There's a lizard on the wall. I think right now, midday, I think that's the only nature I'm going to see is a lizard. Let's walk through here. And then the only thing I see midday is a lot of birds. They come in at night and they want me to fill all their feeders, not the hummingbirds, the regular birds. So I put seed out and they scurry real quick to get a bunch of food and feed for the night. They too must have babies. Going to do that in a few minutes. And then of course the hummingbirds. Tons of hummingbirds. And he's got his ubes. Let's sit down for a minute. It's so pretty. I need to get a chair and table down here and sit here. This is where his ubes are, and he really needs to dig some of them up. As you can see, they have now put all their energy into their tubers. Because, see, they're all brown. It's gone, and they're broken off from the base. So he's got all the purple ubes underneath. He has picked some because I haven't gone to the store to buy any potatoes. So what he's done is, I should say pick, he's dug some up and he's cooked them and we've used them as regular potatoes. Remember, you can cook them like regular potatoes and you can mash them and make mashed potatoes. The only difference is they're purple. So that's been really good. And he's got a lot more, I'm sure, to dig up. This is all sweet potato. He uses that for ground cover a lot because I don't see too many come in. He periodically picks, uh, picks. He digs some up and brings them in, but we're going to have to get a little more serious. And the greens from the sweet potatoes, not the ubes, but the greens from the sweet potatoes are edible too. And that's another reason why I have some sweet potatoes coming up in my garden, and I decided not to pull them out. I was liter literally going to compost the whole thing. Sweet potatoes and everything, because I look at how many he's got. The sweet potatoes go all through his garden. But now that food may be a little bit scarce, I am thinking of using the greens in a green drink and getting a little more serious on my sweet potatoes as well. If it's growing, this year it stays. And then I can decide next year what I'm going to do. So he's got a lot of sweet potatoes. I hear birds. So there are birds around. But like I said, now it's midday. And it's not like in the morning. Notice? Listen. What do you hear? I hear some sort of machinery, a buzzard. I'm not sure if it's a plane or machinery. You don't hear the birds like this morning? Oh my gosh. In the morning, I got up before the sun really rose and it was so loud with birds. It was unbelievable. Now you're gonna hear the weed whackers and all the other things, but you're not gonna hear the birds as much. That's basically it. This is Gary's garden. And we do garden very differently. He wants something he doesn't have to take care of. And he really doesn't. He many times doesn't come down to his garden for days and days. He said there's, you know, with the wood chips, there's enough water for all his plants. And he's got fish in here, so there's no mosquitoes. He's got the proper fish in all these ponds. So he's got the mosquito problem taken care of really good. And it's not warm enough, so there's no dragonflies yet. But pretty soon, we should start getting the dragonflies. And they breed down here, and then they have babies, and they fly around you, and it's just beautiful. So that's the end of my nature walk, I think, for today. Haven't done a nature walk for a while. I do hear a bird. I see lizards. They're all over the place. They're going up and down the brick. Lizards love block walls. It's just so easy for them to scurry up a block wall and then hide. And what they also do is they're also very territorial. So they claim a section of the wall and it's theirs. And if they see another lizard come, they will chase them off. I'm just looking around to see if there's any birds or anything down here, but there isn't right now. And then he's got his pepinos growing. I don't want to turn this into a garden tour. Look at this. Oh, I am picking some of this and taking this up for dinner. Look at this. Now this is grown in the wood chips, straight in the ground. He will compost in place as far as he may dig a trench or dig something out and drop some leftover plants and brown leaves from his garden and then cover it up. His bananas, I know he throws a lot of leaves under because bananas are heavy feeders. And 
When you say a plant is a heavy feeder, all it really needs is something to put, be put back, and that does not mean plant food. You can buy plant food, but it also means just leaves, green leaves, brown leaves, and it will all break down and make beautiful food for the plants. I mean, that's the way nature works. Nobody's telling Mother Nature to go out to the store and buy plant food. So there's different ways of doing it, but that's not to say there's anything wrong with buying plant food. Everybody's got to do it the way it works for them. And that's the way I feel. Even if you've got to buy synthetic food, if that's what you want to do, if it's going to make you go out and garden, then do it. Do whatever it takes because it still is better than going and buying food that's been irradiated. When you grow it, it is so much better. I cannot believe the size of these. Wow. I just thought of something. I can make an amazing bird bath out of that. And I know how to do that. I'm gonna have to think about that. Look at the leaves. Look at, look at my hand. And look at the size. I can't even, I have to get so far back. That's bigger than an elephant ear. Oh my gosh, this is rhubarb. I really do have to figure out how to cook it, even if it's just for him. I've never had it. I didn't grow up with it. It wasn't something I was familiar with. My mom never made it. So I don't know anything about it, but Gary does. He's had rhubarb, so I'm gonna have to do that. I'm just looking at all this and I'm amazed. Well, I think that is the end. The only other thing is I'll show you the hummingbird that is up against the house. She built two nests. She raised four babies at one time. Now, no, she didn't sit on four eggs. But what she did, and I will have to put the whole story together, is she built a nest. She sat on the eggs. The two babies hatched. She fed them when they were midway through and she couldn't sit anymore. She went and built another nest right by the other one. She sat on the other nest. She continued to feed the other two babies on the first nest. And now she is feeding two babies as the other two babies are in the bushes somewhere or on my feeders because they're pretty much weaned or almost weaned. I have seen her feeding them. But she is raising four babies at the same time, which means she's going to do at least three clutches this year, if not four. So I'm going to go grab some greens since I've made the hike down here. And I'm going to have to get down here if he doesn't do a garden tour. And we're gonna to have to walk through and let him tell you what's going on because it is amazing. And see, I just don't know. I don't, I don't know what's going on. Here's another rhubarb over here. He's got a lot of walking onions, but I know he's got other onions as well. And that's a smaller one. That is amazing that, oh, and here's Gary's favorite thing. Stinging nettles. That is not for me. I had my lips swell up for hours on that. I, he handed me a piece and told me to try it and you don't bite into it. It stung me right on the lip like a bee. My whole lip face swelled up. So no, I don't do stinging nettles. It's probably perfectly fine had I done it right, but I had never researched it, never read anything about it, didn't know anything about it. So when I grabbed it, when he handed it to me and I put it on my lip, it literally stung me. It felt like something stung me. And then my lips swelled up, my jaw swelled up. And well, I'm fine. It, it went down, but it, it did take hours. Look at that, he's got all kinds of stuff in here too. Isn't that cool? So nothing can come across here. And he's got these little ladders. So if a lizard fell in or something fell in, they can climb right out. And then he's got all kinds of stuff. Look at his red vein sorrel. All right, so I think I've done enough. You have now got to see Gary's garden. And like I said, he does things so much differently than me. We both have different complete gardens, which is really good because we have, it's not just different interests, it's different ways of doing things. And this will give even you the option to ask him questions or me questions. I do a lot of container gardening as well as putting straight into the ground. And he basically does into the ground. And then he built some of these just to have a raised bed so he wouldn't have to bend and then just do it a different way. So we both have our different methods, plus he ended up, he claimed this. This was here already, and he liked this, and it works out really good because the entire garden, even in the heat of the summer, will get sunshade, sunshade, sunshade all day, which is terrific for plants, especially in warm weather. So I think with that, I'm done. You got to see my treat, which was my favorite thing to see the deer this morning, six of them. Oh my gosh, I can't get over it. 
And I'm going to go check on those hummingbird feeders. I fill them at least three, four, five times a day. I don't even count anymore. When they're empty, I fill them. Even before they're empty, I fill them. I start pulling the empty ones down. By the time I get all the empty ones down, the other ones are empty, and then I got to start all over. So I'm going to go check on the hummingbirds. I hear them. They're making their little tweet, tweet, tweet sound. Oh, I have got... Let me zoom in real quick. I think... That's apricot. I didn't even know that. Tree. That's an old, old tree. That tree was dead. Look at that. I'm going to have apricots. Cool. That tree was almost dead. He had cut it way back. You can see how he cut it. And we thought it was a goner, and it's made a comeback. So that's amazing. All right. So with that, oh, he's got a box up there, too. I think that's a bat box. We'll have to ask him what he put up there. So with that, I'm going to say... Have a great day. I'm glad you got to be with me to see the deer. That was so exciting, which means now I'm going to have to get up in the morning quite often, grab a hot cup of coffee, and go sit there and wait. You never know what's going to come out. Could be something really exciting more than deer next time. Have a great day, and don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye, everybody. I am so, so taking some of these greens in. Cool. Cool.